On today's Top Tip Tuesday with me, Bob, I'm going to show you how we can get some nice motion blur on X particles and Nexus simulations using Redshift. So let's begin. In our scene, then, we have this very basic particle simulation, and we've cached this. You must have your particle simulations cached before rendering motion blur effects, or it won't work properly. So in our simulation, we've got these five particles, and then on frame 47, they die and disappear from the screen. Okay, and if we hit render in our Redshift IPR, we're rendering those particles. So let's do some motion blur effects. We'll just switch off that IPR for now. I'm going to go to Render, Render Settings, Let's move them up here, and we're going to go to Redshift, Advanced Settings, Motion Blur, Enable. And what we're going to do is use the Custom Shutter Type, which I think gives you the most control and makes it most obvious how it's kind of working out this motion blur. So let's put it on Custom. And what we're going to do is put our frame duration on 5. And I'm going to hit Render on our IPR and you're gonna see no motion blur whatsoever. So this is the second thing you must remember. You cannot do motion blur effects and see them in the IPR, it won't work. It's got to render them. So let's switch that off. We can just render here or we could render to picture viewer. And now you're seeing, look, we're getting our motion blur effect. Now, what we're doing in custom mode is we're setting a frame duration. So what's happening is Redshift looks at the current frame that you're on and then it looks for five more adjacent frames to blend that particle position, which then gives you that nice blurring effect. And on five, we have this. Now, what you can do at the moment, we're not using this entire five frame range because we've got these start and end values on the defaults. These are zero to one values. If you want to use the full range of five frames, we need to put the start on zero, and the end on one, and then it's using all of these. So now that we're using the full five frame range, if we hit render again, there's gonna be more blur. Yeah, look, there's more blur there. Cool. So now here is the important bit. How does it work out which direction to look for these extra frames? Does it look at the current frame and then ahead, the current frame and before, or the current frame and a bit ahead and a bit before? That's what our frame position does. By default, it's set to center. So it starts here and it looks for some frames ahead and some frames before, and then it gives us the average. And that's what we've got here. If we put this on start, what it's saying is the start position is the current frame. And then it's going to look for all of the five frames afterwards and then get the blur. So if we render now, you're going to see that the, the blur is going to look the same, but it's going to have shifted forwards a little bit. Let's hit render. Yes, can you see that it's shifted forwards? If we use the end frame position, that means that it's looking at the current frame here, and it's looking for all of the motion blur frames prior to the current position. And this means that the blur will look exactly the same again, but it'll all have shifted back a bit. Let's hit render and see. Yeah, so it's moved back. So that's the, the different looks of those different frame positions. Now, this is a really important thing to remember. If we come forward to the last frame before our particles die, frame 47. So obviously these particles are moving, so should have motion blur. However, if we have our frame position set to start, so it's going to start from here and look for our additional five frames afterwards, there's no data in the frames afterwards because the particles died. So if we hit render, even though there should really be motion blur, because there's no additional data afterwards, suddenly the motion blur disappears. And this is going to look really odd in your scene because earlier on, you would have motion blur effects and then you'd get to frame 47 and suddenly you would see the particles but the motion blur would disappear before they die so that's not going to look good so in this instance you would want to have the frame position on end and that means that it starts here and it's always looking for the frames before the current position which means even on that last frame before they die 
we're still getting that motion blur and then the next frame they're dead and the particles disappear so a lot of the time for a lot of effects you can just keep your frame position in the center and that's going to work fine unless you've got particles which are disappearing and dying in your scene and then you would want to use that end frame position